Hello, my name is Erin Slavin, and today I'll be analyzing two poems, the first being The Rest by Jane Huffman, which was published in December of 2019, and the latter poem being Heartbeats by Melvin Dixon, which was published in 1989. I chose these poems because they have a similar theme of the progression of disease, and I have a particular interest in anatomy and physiology. I will begin with The Rest by Jane Huffman. Still, I keep myself. I take to bed, one lung is red, cut red flowers hung in pink water. My other lung is out of line. From one lung, I tell the truth. From the other lung, I lie. Cut pink flowers hung in red water. Like a pain, the truth is mine. The lie is that today I want to die. Cut red water hung in pink flowers. The rest of it is stillness, rest. A soft cough into a hard pan, a hard cough into a soft plain. Cut pink water hung in red flowers. This poem is a sonnet with four stanzas and 14 lines. Stanza one and three both have three lines, while two and four have four lines. It is told in a first person narration and the only character is the narrator's internal thoughts. It is a lyric poem with descriptive monologue because it meditates on one subject, that subject being lung disease. After reading the poem out loud, the audience can see that the lines are very awkwardly scripted, and this could potentially be due to the decreased ability to correlate functioning sentences while the disease state progresses. The progression of the disease is also shown within the last line of each of the stanzas. There is a repeated similar phrase um, pertaining to the flowers and the water, either being red or pink. Uh, the flowers could be a symbol for the lungs and the red slash pink could be a symbol for the blood filling up the lungs. Another metaphor that this could be potentially seen as is the flowers being flowers that loved ones would bring to a hospital bed and the flowers are dying while the patient is dying. The narrator used repetition of the word cut to portray some violent imagery which also emphasizes the violence that this disease has on her body or his body. The overall theme of this poem is the battle with lung disease and how it progressively gets worse. In line one, the use of the word still emphasizes that this has been an ongoing process. Line two through three states, cut red flowers hung in pink water. However, line 14 states, cut pink water hung in red flowers. The disjointedness of line 14 also could portray how the mind has deteriorated along with the body. Connotations of the flowers and the red slash pink water that they lie in could be shown as the flowers being the lungs. The short sentences could also be portrayed as the inability to create fluid sentences um, with the shortness of breath that lung disease brings. Lines four through six uses alliterations with the letter L. My lung is out of line. From one lung, I tell the truth. The other lung, I lie. The longest line in the poem is long line nine. The lie is that today I want to die. And this sentence has no breaks and also brings out a tone of despair. It shows the reader that the narrator is quite aware that they are going to die. However, does not want to accept that fate. The setting is not explicitly shown within this poem. However, it can be inferred that it is in a hospital, particular, particularly through lines 12 through 13, a soft cough into a hard pan and a hard cough into a soft plane. Uses imagery to describe the hard pans that are used in hospitals, which contain contents that need to be disposed of. Clues that also tell that this takes place in a hospital is the flowers on the bedside table when many loved ones bring flowers to their sick ones in hospitals. Fault lines observed could be the actual title, The Rest, since there is no rest described at all within the poem. Was the rest pertaining to the eternal rest of death? Are the flowers really her lungs that she's speaking of? And why does the author choose the last line of each stanza and drastically change it? The second poem I will be analyzing is Heartbeats by Melvin Dixon, which was published in 1989. Work out, then laps, chin ups, look good. Steam room, dress warm, call home, fresh air. 
Eat right, rest well, sweetheart, safe sex, sore throat, long flu, hard nodes, beware, test blood, count cells, reds thin, right slow, dress warm, eat well, short breath, fatigue, night sweats, dry cough, loose stools, weight loss, get mad, fight back, call home, rest well, don't cry, take charge, no sex, eat right, call home, talk slow, chin up, no air, arms wide, nodes hard, cough dry, hold on, mouth wide, drink this, breathe in, breathe out, no air, breathe in, breathe in, no air, blackout, white rooms, head hot, feed cold, no work, eat right, cat scan, chin up, breathe in, breathe out, no air, no air, thin blood, sore lungs, mouth dry, mind gone, six months, three weeks, can't eat, no air, today, tonight, it waits for me, sweetheart, don't stop. Breathe in. Breathe out. This is a lyric poem with dramatic monologue fo focus particularly on the only character within this. It is the internal thoughts of the person going through a disease. Each line is only two sentences, each sentence containing two syllables each. After read out loud, this could be inferred that it was written this way to portray the heartbeats, thus the title Heartbeats. The authors use the author uses couplets to portray the sound of a heartbeat, lub-dub. Lines one through six, the narrator is in good health, which can be inferred from him working out and going to a sauna and looking good. Line seven through 14 is the beginning of the illness and the narrator begins to lose hope. Lines 15 through 18, the narrator is begging to regain hope. Line 15 tells that the narrator is ready to fight back which also gives the audience a sense of hope and optimism. Lines 25 through 40, there seems to be no hope for the narrator as the symptoms have taken a turn for the worse. Line 34 states, mouth dry, mind gone, showing that the disease have, has progressed to the brain. Lines 34 through 40, the speaker has accepted the inevitability of death and is now waiting upon its arrival, questioning the amount of time he or she has left on this earth. The overall theme of this poem is the persistence of a disease on the human body despite battles against it, such as working out. The poem begins with an optimistic outlook, however, carries on to a tone of despair and desperation. The author plays with his dictions, for example, in line two, using the words chin ups, referring to an act of exercise. However, in line 30, he uses chin up as a form of bravery to keep your chin up and be optimistic. Line six, the author uses sweetheart as one word to refer to his lover. However, in line 39, he uses sweetheart, two separate words, referring to his organ, his heart, and begging it to keep up to keep him alive. The author also uses a lot of repetition of the words breathe in and breathe out. This could be seen as a form of of meditation to kind of bring him back to a relaxed state. The setting of this is most likely taking place in the 1980s when the AIDS and HIV pandemic was at its height. Again, the author, Melvin Dixon, actually was suffering from AIDS himself. Fault lines within this poem um, include, he mentions calling home often however does his home family know about this disease and if so are they visiting and if not why aren't they visiting and does the sweetheart mentioned in line six does he stick around and if so was it because of the disease that he left another fault line is was this poem intended to be about aids both of these poems um use internal thoughts of someone suffering through a disease and both the poems have no other characters other than the narrator therefore it can be inferred that they are battling this sickness potentially alone which could also be a metaphor that in the end on your deathbed all you truly have is yourself both poems also use short and to the point sentences to carry an intense rhythm with deep emotion they both have a similar theme with disease and losing touch with reality as the disease progresses. Although both poems were portraying different diseases, the audience can get a clear visual of how a disease can cripple one's life and bring it to an end, inevitably it resulting in death. The poems were both great reads. Thank you.